All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Shane Olson. I'm the manager of business retention, expansion, and tourism uh, with Strathcona County. Thanks, everyone, for joining us here this morning uh, for what you need to know to enhance your business performance. Uh, this is our last seminar before the summer break. We do hope to reconvene again in September, uh, where we will kick off a whole series into the fall to support our business community. I would like to start by acknowledging that Strathcona County is located on uh, Treaty 6 territory and homeland to the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 2 and 4. Strathcona County honours the First Peoples of this land. We recognize that we stand upon the land that carries the footsteps of the Cree, Métis and Blackfoot amongst many other nations who have been here for thousands of years. Therefore, Strathcona County has an inherent responsibility to foster healthier relationships with First Peoples and further the calls to action. I would like to briefly go over some of the functionality for those of you that have joined us on Teams today in the meeting environment uh, virtually. Uh, during the presentation, please turn off your video and your microphone for best uh, results. We ask that you hold your questions for the end of the presentation. And if you'd like, you may choose to share the name of your business and a brief summary of what you do in the chat box. And if for some reason your chat button is grayed out, you'll want to exit the meeting and re-enter using the same link that you originally used to get here this morning. As a last resort, you can email Tara, tara.demunich, who is on the uh, chat this morning um, as well. I would now like to introduce Mike Ivanik. He's Member Services Specialist with the Sherwood Park and District Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Chamber has been a very good sponsor with us on this seminar series. And Mike will introduce our speakers for today. Mike. Thank you, Shane. Um, our presenters today are Shafia Koja and Evaristo Man. My, I, I apologize, Evaristo. Um, Evaristo is Senior uh, Account Manager at BDC, where he's worked for the past 12 years. He provides secured and unsecured uh, flexible financing solutions for Canadian entrepreneurs. The financing is the areas of commercial real estate, equipment, working capital, information, communications, technologies, both software and hardware, and business changes of ownership. He also works as part of a team that identifies management deficiencies in companies and provide business advisory services to Canadian entrepreneurs. Uh, Evaristo works in the BDC South Office uh, on Calgary Trail, lives in Fort Saskatchewan, enjoys gardening, playing soccer, and has picked up cycling and has two kids. Uh, Shafelia uh, Koja is a Senior Policy Advisor in Family Community Services for Strathcona County. She has extensive uh, experience in the areas of diversity and inclusion. Her passion and experience is reflected as she focus, focuses on building a community for all and, and leads a diversity and inclusion initiative in the municipality of Strathcona County. Over her career spanning over 16 years, she has led and implemented policies, projects and key strategies in the government and civil society sectors in Canada and internationally. Shafelia has a MBA in Community Economic Development, has an International Association for Public Participation certi Certification and is a uh, crucial con conversations trainer for Strathcona County. Her experiences include speaking on the topics of risk management, bystander training, inclusion, conflict resolution, managing difficult con conversations, sustainability and succession planning, leadership, ethical dilemmas, and speaking with one voice. She has facilitated and delivered speaking assignments to diverse groups of audiences, including senior leadership, legal and paralegal lawyers, professional and administrative staff, executive leadership, teachers and school superintendents, board of directors and volunteers at national and international forums. In addition to volunteering as a uh, mediator for the Strathcona County Mediation Society, she volunteers for a national settlement board focusing on newcomers and refugees to Canada. She currently serves as a president for PLANS, which is Planned Lifetime Advisory Network, that supports individuals who face isolation, and often due to disabilities. Welcome, Evaristo and Shafili. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mike, and thank you, Shane, uh, for such a warm welcome. Um, you know, uh, Evaristo and I are really excited to be here, and uh, thank you for folks who are online as well. 
uh, and as Shane shared um, the land and the territorial acknowledgement, I was sitting there and thinking about how businesses are connected through in the on the land because that's where we do our business, that's where we have our relationships and connections. So uh, it was it's great to to see that connection as well. So as we are talking about diversity and inclusion, um, I want you to take a moment to rate your comfort on this topic and you don't have to share your numbers with me just rate on a scale from one to ten one being the lowest and ten being the highest uh, rate your level of comfort confidence when you think about diversity and inclusion like what comes to mind do you feel uh where do you see yourself how do you how does that sit with you so take a moment to think about that And Everesto and I hope that uh, at the end of the presentation, we are able to move that number a little bit on the higher side. So that's our, that's our goal for today. We just wanted to share uh, what we're hoping to cover in the presentation today. So some of the things we'll talk about, we'll, we'll unpack the buzzwords, you know, language changes when we think about diversity, inclusion, equity, all of these terms these jargons exist in, in, our, in our world, in our current context, and sometimes they're used interchangeably, sometimes they are meshed into one meaning, and today we'll try to unpack that. We'll also look at where is dimensions of diversity, so beyond age, gender, and color. So we'll try and look at other aspects of diversity as well, and how does inclusion fit into the mix is also something we'll look at. Uh, the next piece we'll talk about uh, is the impact on business outcomes and how uh, DNI uh, is imperative for for business and how it impacts uh, the business outcomes. So we'll look at some stats. We'll look at some examples. Uh, we will then uh, talk about um, some practical solutions. What can you do as a business owner, and how would that, you apply that? Uh, some of the other things we also wanted to share is some some of the assumptions and the approach that uh, Everest and I are going to take today. So. Uh, we want you to know that um, we recognize uh, that businesses uh, sometimes don't have the luxury of resources. You don't have the ability to think you know, further ahead or even think of these concepts and apply it to your everyday life. So that becomes a challenge. So we recognize that. And that's kind of where we come in to sh give, you, uh, give you a high level overview and how it applies. So please know that there is no shame, guilt uh, in, in this conversation. We are all at different points in our journey around this topic. And if there is a challenge that you are facing, please, you're welcome to share that. Bring that to the forefront. This is a learning and a safe space. So this is our opportunity to dig deeper into those challenges and unpack that a little bit. Uh, some of the other assumptions we go with is um, respectful exchange of ideas. So as I said, please share. Share your ideas, and we will uh, talk about those. The other couple uh, assumptions that I would share is um, you are expert in what you do. You you know you you run these businesses. You interact with uh, communities and members uh, and customers. So you you are the expert. So we lean on you to to bring that expertise today as well. And know that these conversations around diversity and inclusion, uh, maybe new conversations. Maybe this might be the first time you might be discussing this, or this might be you know uh, your passion area. Uh, but know that these challenges um, are not new. And it's a continuing process. We are all on this learning, a journey of learning and reflection. And we have dedicated time at the end where we will answer some questions and, and kind of open up uh, the conversation a bit here. So on the next slide, we are talking about um, why diversity and inclusion. So the connection uh, of us speaking here today, uh, Strathcona County has a diversity and inclusion policy, which uh, has the strategy of building this community of Strathcona County, a community for all. So that is welcoming, inclusive, accessible, there are no barriers. So that's kind of our goal that we are, we are working towards. Strathcona County also has strategic goals that are targeted towards that, and two of the four goals focus directly on, on diversity and inclusion. So just wanted to bring that to the forefront as well. So let's define the jargons a bit. Uh, so when we think about diversity, equity, inclusion, what do all these things really mean? So diversity is really a makeup of our race, gender, our physical, mental abilities, our cognition, our neuro typicality. So it's a bunch of layers that make up the diversity piece. So when you think about diversity, when you think about who you are as a person, you know, when you introduce yourself to somebody, you might say, I love music. I, I'm an Oilers fan. Um, you know, I love jazz or you are on a sports team that you're really interested in. So all of those pieces that you are interested in, who, who you are, become part of your diversity. 
Equity, on the other hand, is a condition that's inclusive and respectful treatment for all people. So equity is around giving people the tools and resources that they need based on where they are at. So that's what equity is about. Inclusion is creating a culture where everyone feels that they have a voice, they are respected, they have the ability to make a decision. So if we were to put it simply, diversity is like number of heads in the room, and inclusion would be making those heads count. Or one of the definitions I brought here through Andrea is diversity is the mix and inclusion is making the mix work. So it's very interrelated. Diversity is reality. Diversity is who we are, what we bring. And inclusion is how we feel. Do we feel you know, a sense of belonging? Do we feel respected? Do we, when we walk into a space, do we feel we have a voice? Uh, you know? So all of those aspects of how we go about is where inclusion comes into play. So I wanted to bring this chart, and this is a, a huge circle, so I'll walk you through from inside out. Um, but I wanted to bring this forward um, because sometimes when we think about diversity, we think about age, we think about color, we think about uh, race. And diversity is so much more beyond that. And it's, it's like this onion where there are multiple layers and peels of it. So when you look at the inner circle, which is the internal aspect, so that's about age, that's about sexual orientation, that's about our, our physical appearance and all those factors. When you go to the outer circle, which is the external factor, that is around our education, what are we interested in, what are some of the things we've done, our experiences. Then there is an organizational layer, which is the third layer, and that would be about the places we have worked, um, our own businesses, our own environments that we interact with. And the last layer is around the era. And that's around some of the historical, the global things that occur in, in our context. So currently, we are all experiencing pandemic and coming out of pandemic. So those would be certain historical, generational things and events that we all experience. What's neat and interesting about this thing is that nobody is born racialized or nobody is born in, in a certain way. It's the interaction and the environment we are in where we bring in our diversity and the interaction makes us feel included or not included. So for example, we might feel you know, we are very young or we might feel we are very old. Now that depends on how you're feeling that day. If you have had a good sleep, if you have have a body ache, you, know, you might not feel great no matter what age you are. Another day, if you go to a kindergarten and no matter what age you are, you might feel old, right? So whoever we are, whatever we bring to the table, it's the interaction of the environment that impacts some of the things. So when we think about certain groups, certain groups that are minority, that are made marginalized or vulnerable, some life experiences cause either inclusion or exclusion for, for them. So for example, everyone might recall 9-11. And if you take a moment and think about where you were in that moment or what was going on for you, you are probably able to remember what was going on. You might probably remember, you know, that moment, the news that you heard, who you contacted. You might, the memory might still be very fresh because it was a, an era, a global event. What's interesting about that is I have a friend and after that event, and he has a beard, and every time he travels after that event, he's always called out for a random check. Now, it happens once, twice, okay, but if it happens every time, it's like, okay, what's going on here, right? So it's an aspect of his diversity. He's born and raised in North America, right? Has a business, travels a lot. But what's interesting is that an aspect of the diversity, when a global or a world event occurs, it's the impact of, of how their lives change, the experiences and how it impacts them personally. Similar thing that we may have heard around, um, you know, the with COVID and the hate that we all witnessed and the violence that happened with the South Asian community, right, or the Asian community. So it's interesting how th some of those aspects of diversity come into this interplay when we think about these different levels of, of diversity. So I wanted to bring that in the forefront because sometimes I feel we are given limited resources and we are all targeting uh, our, you know, our goals and we have aspirations. But what's interesting about this image is you, you see various skill sets and abilities here represented, and they're all being tasked to get the fruit that they have to climb tree, right? So sometimes we end up in situations where uh, we, we are asked or we, we assume that we have to get to certain goals and everyone would be able to do it. 
but perhaps not. People have had different experiences. Certain things are impacting them in a different way, and, and that's kind of where it might be either easier or a little bit more difficult in terms of how they can get to their goal. So the message that we wanted to leave you with is be curious, stay curious, check out, see what's going on, what's happening for people uh, as, as you work, as you interact with vendors, as you interact with different, different things. So if we go to the next slide, and the next slide is a little bit of uh, a video, and I wanted to bring that uh, in the forefront because in, as we're thinking about diversity, I wanted to bring one aspect of diversity and kind of share what does that look like or could look like in, in a potential environment. Good morning, Bob. Good morning there, big man. Morning, Alice! There's no need to be awkward. Poor Bob. Like so many of us, he just doesn't know how to interact with people with disabilities. It's pretty easy, really. People with disabilities are people first. We need the same things that every person needs, like respect. Good morning, everyone. Attention! Uh, okay. Maybe we need to be more specific. The easiest way to show respect is to focus on the person, not the disability. It's okay, you'll get the hang of it. One easy way to focus on the person is to watch the person signing and not their interpreter. Or their companion. It's really cool that you'd like to help, but do us both a favor and please ask me first. What you think might be helping? I got you. Wait, wait, ah! Oh no, might actually not. If you'd like to offer me help, let me hold on to your elbow. Don't take mine. Hey, would you like to take my arm? Sure. Assistive devices help us to live our lives. They're really important and really personal. <gasps> Grabbing them only makes it weird for everyone. What? Please only touch our devices and service animals if we've given you permission. And don't take it personally if I ask you not to. Remember that my service animal helps me all the time. Neither of us would like it if we were separated. Remember, we make our own decisions. We sign documents, vote, volunteer, work, and pay taxes. We get married. So don't address me just because I have a great smile. Just because I'm blind May I help you? does not mean I'm deaf. I don't know. I think he said he was gonna come, but... Just because I'm deaf doesn't mean I'm blind. And just because I use a wheelchair doesn't mean that I can't sweep you off your feet. So take a deep breath. Relax. We don't bite. Unless we're really hungry. Hello, dear ladies. How are you? Hello. And if you're not sure what to do, just ask. Hi. Would you still like to see a menu? Uh, no, thanks. But can you please read it to me? Sure, definitely. Just treat us the way you would want to be treated, and we'll all be okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Alice. Good morning. Awkward no more. Nice job, Bob. Go forth and be human. There's no need to be awkward. Okay. So, thoughts, reflections on the video. It's, and really it's one aspect of diversity, but it's, it's the same message, you know, treat people the way they want to be treated, the way you want to be treated. Uh, and, you know, we all kind of want the same thing around respect, around, uh, you know, just ask and, and people will be more than willing to, to share. So, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that was something that you could take away. Um, we also wanted to share about Strathcona County and our current context. And um, if, you, if I were to ask you, do you think we are diverse or how diverse are we? What comes to mind for you? Different 
cultural mix. Different cultural mix, yeah, absolutely. So I wanted to bring forward some stats from our census, uh, and, and these are from the previous years, So uh, because we are still waiting for results on the current census. Just wanted to share some of the, some of the statistics here to, to bring, bring all of this to our current context. So I, and you may know all of these things already. We are the fourth largest ministry, um, uh, municipality in addition to Calgary, Edmonton, and Red Deer. We have about 73% uh, is urban population and 27% rural. What's interesting is we have about 8% uh, visible minority, 4% of indigenous population, and approximately 4% households fit in the low income household category. Now, this has probably changed and all of these numbers have only gone up uh, and, and not lower. Um, and uh, also wanted to highlight some of the languages that are spoken at home by minority groups. So some of the things that you see here are Tagalog, Punjabi, Spanish, German, and Mandarin. Uh, and one in five Canadians are living with a disability. So these are just some stats to contextualize some of the things that we are talking about. And these numbers have only gone up since, uh, since the previous uh, research and, and data. Uh, in the next few slides, I also wanted to uh, share some of the statistics around business outcomes and why is DNI an imperative for business and, and what is the proven uh, research and statistics show. So some of these stats that I'll be sharing with you in the next few slides come from Deloitte, from McKinsey, uh, some of the other uh, research areas. So um, in, in this slide, it talks about leveraging diversity of thinking. So this is important because research indicates that organizations or companies that are more diverse are 20% higher in their innovation and are able to decrease their risks 30%. So when you have your, your staff composition, your, the groups you work with, when they are diverse, there you, you see that how the diversity is being leveraged and it helps to uh, identify risk, it helps you to diversify, it helps you to problem solve better, it helps you cater to um, this group think, right? So where everyone kind of thinks about the same, this having more diversity of thinking and thought allows you to question some of those challenges to consider aspects from different angles. So um, research, research kind of shows that which is very interesting. So when we think about um, diversity and inclusion, another aspect that's important is companies or organizations that are more culturally diverse, more ethnically diverse, are 33% more likely to be leading the industry profitability. So they are um, you know, in, in a higher quartile of industry profits. So uh, that was also interesting. But then there's also a penalty that the research in McKinsey's report suggests because the companies who don't catch up, uh, if you go next, then it's the 29% on the lower quartile which is very interesting. I find that, you know, um, it's, it's kind of proven that more and more companies who are going forward with having intentional diversity and inclusion embedded in, into their organization, they are seeing the profitability and, and benefits of that. Diversity without inclusion is not enough. So it's not just enough to have different people, but you need to create this space in the environment to make it more inclusive so you can reap the benefit of it. What's interesting about this data uh, and this research is inclusive cultures are two times more likely to meet or exceed financial targets, three times more likely to be high performing, and six times more likely to be innovative and agile, and eight times more likely to achieve better business outcomes. Another research that Deloitte has done, uh, they have shared that there's a 10% improvement in perception of inclusion increases work attendance by one day uh, per employee. So just the perception of inclusion as you kind of pay attention to it, that they see a direct correlation, a direct increase in attendance, a direct increase in profitability and performance. The next is around inclusive leadership. So as you, you are the leaders in your business, thinking about uh, all the other leaders as well in your organization, I think, what do they demonstrate? Are they considering diversity and inclusion in, in your business? And how is that impacting? Deloitte and McKinsey's research suggests that more inclusive leaders and create this perception of inclusion, a sense that everyone belongs, a, a space where people feel safe and included and respected, that helps with a 70% increase in experiences of fairness, respect, value, belonging, psychological safety and inspiration. So it's 70%, which is very interesting. And when we think about team performance, that goes up 17% and 20% increase in decision making quality and 29% in team collaboration. 
So all of these numbers just kind of restate or reinforce the point that diversity and inclusion helps with stronger client relationships, enhanced brand reputation, happier, more productive teams, improved talent retention, high levels of innovation, greater profitability. So all of these uh, are proven benefits for, through research and through some of the companies that do this uh, and, and pay attention to diversity and inclusion work. So you may also be thinking that this might be possible for some of the bigger companies that probably have resources, they have staff, and you know, how do you, how do you really do this? So this seems difficult perhaps, uh, but the next slide kind of shows you some of the things to consider as you know, some of the simple things that you can perhaps think about. So, um, for example, your promotional materials, thinking about does your promotional material include or offer um, for, for people with different abilities and diversity? You can think about your physical space. Is there a spot that uh, you can let people sit? Or, you know, when as people enter your business, uh, is, you know, have you considered for people who are in a wheelchair or have a cane or a stick? Right? So it's those small things that you can think about in, in your everyday work that can help with, with enhancing your business performance, helping your clients and customers. When we think about customer service, and you're probably all doing this already, is thinking about inclusive language. You know, are you, uh, maybe you have display your pronouns. Maybe you ask somebody for their pronouns. Uh, you think about, um, you know, not coming with any assumptions around different people's gender orientation and sexual orientation, right? Um, the idea that when you treat everybody respectfully, it will automatically happen where you create that space. When you think about working with different agencies uh, and you partner with different agencies, you know, checking in with them, how's it going? Do, what is their experience like? Seeing things from their lens and kind of seeing, are, are there things that you can improve in your business? When we think about your products, thinking about diversification within your products and if that meets the various diverse audiences that you're trying to target. Um, some of the things in your own hiring, you know, who, who are you hiring? Where are you going to hire people? Is that diverse? Does, do you offer some flexible options for people with varying needs? Do you acknowledge some of the key dates or some key recognition events that happen? Because those give out the message to people, to customers, to clients that you care about these things. You are listening, you're paying attention to these things. And overall, you know, just staying curious and, and kind of having a conversation. The, the, when you think about, okay, what is one thing that I can do today when I, after this? And maybe have a conversation. Think about, you know, go check with your staff, talk to your colleagues, talk to a vendor and kind of see how you can, how you can embed diversity and inclusion in your work and, and go from there. So I would now like to invite our Everesto to, uh, from BDC because we also wanted to give you some very specific examples of some of the other companies and kind of real life of how all of the things that I've shared and applying it to, to some of the businesses that happen. So Everesto, over to you. So again, my name is Everesto. I, um, I work for BDC. Um, I am, uh, the reason why I'm here today specifically because I am the BDC diversity champion in Alberta North. Um, and uh, we historically have a very good relationship, working relationship with Strathcona County generally and uh, the Sherwood Park Chamber as well. And so when this uh, is, is, uh, issue came up, we thought, oh, why not? Let's, let's join them up and, uh, and do something good together. So BDC, for those of you who, don't, who, have, who might not have heard about BDC, uh, is a, a federal crown corporation. Uh, so we're owned by the, by the feds 100%. Um, our job in the Canadian market is we provide uh, uh, flexible advising and financing solutions to Canadian entrepreneurs. We are the only uh, Canadian financial institutions uh, that looks after Canadian just Canadian entrepreneurs exclusively. That's all we do. We don't do anything else. So we don't do retail banking or anything like that. We just do uh, stuff that uh, has uh, something to do with Canadian entrepreneurs. So today, what am I going to talk about? Um, I'm going to talk about, you know, some of the diversity initiatives that we have going on at BDC right now. Um, I'm also going to talk about, um, um, you know, the benefits for diversity and inclusion um, for small businesses specifically, because, you know, the, you know, it's great to think about diversity and inclusion with the big companies because they've got the money, they've got the resources, they've got the time you know, and everything. But what can we do as small to, uh, to medium-sized businesses in order to enhance, uh, you know, our, our business performance through diversity? So I'm going to talk a bit about that. 
I'm also going to talk about, um, you know, the, the big companies that I've just mentioned. What what are they doing? Those big companies in their organizations in order to uh, enhance uh, diversity and inclusion. And uh, uh, the last thing I'm going to talk about is, is seven tips to improve diversity, equity, and inclusion in small businesses. So. I'm going to, as I pointed out, I'll start with what we're doing at BDC. So, at uh, BDC, we believe that diversity is good. Uh, it's good for business, uh, it's good for entrepreneurs, and it's good for Canada. So, there's a business case for diversity. We, it's not just a nice to have or a nice to do. And the, the, uh, the, uh, the top uh, key messages at BDC for diversity are. The first one is, at BDC, our purpose is to ensure that all entrepreneurs have access to the resources, financing, advice, networks, and tools that they need to succeed. So it's all entrepreneurs. It doesn't matter age, ab ability or disability, you know, ethnicity and gender, sexual orientation, and, and uh, everything that goes with diversity. And number two is that diversity and inclusion are part of our business strategy and our company values. Number three, BDC works uh, the walk. Our commitment starts internally with a measurable action plan and extends to our client diversity strategy, which guides our support for underserved Canadian entrepreneurs. And then number four, um, we still have obviously lots of work to do like everybody else out there. You know, diversity is a journey. It's not, it's not a destination, but we are committed to listening and learning and working together to help our entrepreneurs reach their full uh, potential or to make them thrive. So why is diversity important? We think that, um, as I pointed out earlier, diversity and inclusion makes good business sense, as simple as that, right? Otherwise, businesses would not be doing it because businesses are out there to make money. We all know that, right? Um, research shows that uh, companies with gender and ethnic diversity consistently deliver more innovation, as Shefali uh, pointed out, higher revenues, as she pointed out again, and larger profits and better employee retention. Um, here are some stats for you. Um, closing the gender gap could add $420 billion in 2026 to the Canadian economy. That's a big number. Increasing leadership participation for women can grow profitability by 15%. This was the research that was done by uh, Patterson Institute for International Economics. Um, and then it says here for Mackenzie, uh, um, Shefali also pointed out some studies from uh, Mackenzie. Companies with racial and ethnic diversity deliver 35% above standard industry returns, right? So, the, so as I'm saying, that there's a business case for this. Diverse businesses are profitable, resilient, innovative, and global. At the end of the day, our differences make us stronger, not weaker. We are, uh, and we at BDC are making progress, but we still have lots of work to do, as I pointed out. I'll just give you a snapshot of some of the challenges faced by some of our diverse entrepreneurs right here in Canada. 43% um, of Indigenous small business owners consider access to financing as an obstacle to growth. Um, and access to capital, networking and resources for marketing are the top challenges faced by black entrepreneurs. Number three. 16% of Canadian SMEs are majority owned by women. So it's 16% majority owned by, by women versus 65% majority owned by men. And then 20% owned uh, equally by men and women. There's nothing inherently wrong with this when you think about it, but to think of it in the context of that number that I gave you earlier on, that closing the gender gap could add 420 billion in 2026. So there's an economic imperative uh, to try and make sure that we are more inclusive uh, as we conduct business in Canada. And then the fourth point is that only 5% of Canadian tech companies have a woman CEO. Just 5%, eh? Um, and then close to 50%. Now, this, this is interesting. I found this interesting. Listen to this. Close to 50% of LGBT uh, um, plus business owners have purposefully hidden the fact that their company has LGBT ownership. So they go out there and hide it. Nearly half of LGBTQ plus business owners have hidden who they were in business uh, dealings with to avoid losing opportunities. And more than a third have lost, have actually lost business opportunities due to being LGBT uh, plus. So that's, these are real life examples of discrimination and lack of diversity within uh, our business community. So we still have lots of work to do because if 
certain members of our community actually have to go out and hide who they are just to have access to the access that we all have, then we still have lots of work to do. And again, it's a journey. As Chef Ali pointed out, it's not about blame, it's not about shame. It's just realizing and recognizing where we are and trying to move forward. What have we done at BDC? So we, as I said, we try to uh, you know, walk the walk. Um, what does BDC do, do to foster diversity and inclusion internally? So at BDC, diversity and inclusion are part of our business strategies. I pointed out in our company values. We want the organization and the people working in it to reflect Canada's increasing diverse workforce and business community. We see the value of diversity of thought, diversity of experience, and diversity of background. We also see the impact of bringing these differences together to create something unique. Okay? So BDC's commitment starts with our internal diversity and inclusion leadership, leadership council. So we have, a, we have a diversity and inclusion leadership council at BDC made up of 16 senior leaders. So it's got to start from the top, right? Um, who are supported by employees from across the country. People like myself, who is a, uh, a diversity uh, ambassador in Alberta North and represent all of our business units. Together, we are responsible for setting targets prioritizing and con contributing to the advancement of our diversity and inclusion practices. The other thing that we did that was big, that kicked off our diversity journey is uh, in a big way. I mean, we've, we've always been diverse, but we're being more intentional now. In July 2020, Michael Denham, uh, BDC's uh, former CEO, signed the Black North Initiative uh, CEO Pledge. This is an initiative of the Canadian Council of Business Leaders against anti-Black uh, systemic racism. Through this pledge, BDC is committing to specific actions and targets to end anti-black systemic racism and also create more opportunities for the black community. The other thing we're doing is we conduct an annual diversity and inclusion survey and annual listening circles to gather our employees' uh, uh, important feedback to measure and inform our diversity and inclusion action plan. This includes unconscious bias training and manage, mandatory in, internal uh, learning programs with all employees, including in, uh, inclusive leadership for the anti-racist workplace and being an ally in an anti-racist workplace. We as BDC are committed to increasing our uh, employee uh, diversity. Uh, we work with immigrant serving organizations to hire new Canadians with backgrounds in the finance and administration fields as well as provide mentorship and participate in job skills workshops. The other thing we do is in 2021, BDC partnered with ASEAN Canada to ensure pan-Asian talent can achieve their full potential in Canada. We recruit uh, about 100 summer students annually with a focus on uh, diversity. And we work with, with, a, with an organization called Our Children's Medicine, or OCM. Uh, this is to help address barriers to employment at the Bank for Indigenous Persons. OCM connects non-profit agencies, Canadian businesses and indigenous job seekers to employment opportunities. So job, job seekers create a profile that highlights their skills gained from lived experiences, thereby replacing the traditional paper resume that focuses on work experience uh, and educational, ex you know, formal education experiences and so on. In 2019, BDC signed the United Nations Women's Empowerment Principles. The same year, BDC won the Réseau uh, des Femmes uh, des Affaires du Canada yeah, Impact Award for large corporations and their involvement in helping women grow and expand beyond uh, our borders. And very briefly, I'm going to talk about some of the awards that BDC has won. Um, or, oh, you know, we have been recognized for the for, you know, around the following uh, awards and recognitions uh, for our diversity. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is Canada's best diversity employers. So we have been recognized as one of Canada's best uh, diversity employers in 2010 to 2016. So 2010, 2011, 20, and so on and so on. And then from 2018 to 2020, um, we have been Canada's top 100 employers uh, from 2007 to 2018 and then in 2020. Um, great place to work, certified in 2018, um, Montreal's top employers, two, 2007 to 2020, and so on and so on and so on. Um, this, this in no way means that we are perfect at it or we are champions or anything like that. I think it just 
I recognize is that we are trying. That's all it is for a business, right? So we are trying and, and we're being recognized for it. Um, and so what are we doing to foster a diverse entrepreneurial ecosystem, business ecosystem? What is BDC doing to foster that and encourage creation of a diverse entrepreneurial ecosystem in Canada? So in partnership with public and private sector players, we will fill key market gaps by providing targeted financing and, ad and advice to underserved groups of business owners, including women, rac racialized communities, and indigenous entrepreneurs. Why are we doing this? Our research shows that some entrepreneurs are underserved, including but not limited, as I've pointed out, indigenous black women and so on. And this is through unconscious bias, discrimination, racism, lack of representation resulting in smaller networks, fewer role models, limited access to funding and resources, uh, and so on and so on. And how are we doing this? Our client diversity strategy ensures that all entrepreneurs can thrive in Canada and the Canadian uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem, plus that all BDC employees have a diverse and inclusive mindset. So it, it starts from the top, it's got to go down and include you know, everybody throughout the organization. It's got to percolate down to everybody in the organization by having an inclusive and diverse uh, mindset. Um, and we also leverage learnings from our successful women entrepreneurship st strategy that we, had, uh, that we have going at PDC for, uh, for a number of years now. Um, and, and I think this is very important even for entrepreneurs, uh, those online and those in the room, is that uh, we, we try and take a relationship-driven approach. What does this mean? We listen, uh, we seek to understand, and then we take action. Because without listening, you know, you're never going to understand, right? And so it really starts with just a conversation, as Shefali pointed out. Um, and then you go from there. I think, you know, in as far as BDC is concerned, I've got a lot of stuff, but that's where I'm going to end. Uh, I'm going to end it, as far as BDC is concerned specifically is that while this, the, the strategy um, intends to support all diverse entrepreneurs, um, and this is where we, we want to end up as BDC, we want to support every uh, diversity category in as far as we can. Unfortunately, you know, you have to start somewhere, as we pointed out. And for now, these are the areas that we are, we are, we are working on. Indigenous entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs, black entrepreneurs, LGBTQ2 plus entrepreneurs, military uh, veterans uh, that have turned into being entrepreneurs. And then we also have a supply diversity program which helps uh, diverse communities, uh, you know, um, a source, um, or, sorry, supply uh, products and services to BDC. So if there is, uh, you, know, a, a, you know, a diverse community or diverse individual, diverse businesses, they, we have a program that uh, uh, that helps uh, SBDC. We have a program that helps them. Um, I think maybe the most pertinent uh, part of my presentation right now to go to is maybe um, I think I'll go to the the tips uh, to improve diversity, equity, and inclusion in small businesses. You know enough about the big businesses and you know the BDCs of this world. Um, uh, what, what can we do as small businesses in our community? Um, the first thing, number one, is uh, look beyond traditional markers of diversity, right? So especially if you're a small business, right? It can feel hard to include uh, uh, a lot of diversity if you only have maybe 10, 5 employees, but you can focus on a variety uh, of diverse factors outside of uh, race and gender, such as age, family status, and location. So those are easier, right? Just think about that. Number two, Start with leadership. As I pointed out, it starts at the top. It doesn't matter whether you're a small business or a big business, right? Um, diversity and inclusion it has to come from the top down and is usually the first indication to others looking into your company for, uh, of the diversity that may be there. So if, if you start at the top, everybody can see that this is the direction that the company is going, that, that this is a priority to the business. It also goes a long way in promoting inclusion and the sense of belonging when employees see someone of a diverse background, uh, perhaps similar to their own, represented on the leadership team. And it doesn't have to be ethnicity only. If you have someone who's got, you know, uh, ability challenges, 
and, and, and if they're part of a leadership team and, you know, if someone else walks in and they suffer from the same um, uh, constraint, uh, they feel more included, right, as a customer or as an investor or as a partner of the business, right, a supplier or whoever, right? What else can a small business do? Reduce bias and discrimination in the interview and promotion pr process. This seems very, very basic and very obvious, but you will be surprised as to, uh, you know, some of the interview uh, techniques out there that really don't promote diversity. So when writing job descriptions, think carefully about whether you're excluding anyone based on uh, unreasonable requirements of, uh, for education, skills, or experience. From there, reevaluate your interview process, uh, and there are plenty of interview tactics that promote diversity and inclusion. The most common is taking a structured approach, um, and structured, structured interviews reduce bias by making the process the same for each candidate. I actually know of companies that do blind, they call it blind interviews or blind candidates, where they, they, they you know, block the name of the candidate and, you know, stuff that might, might suggest, you know, ethnicity or, you know, where they're from and things like that. So that's, that's something that uh, small businesses can adopt in their, um, in their interview process. Now, number four, support more religious and cultural practices. I think Shefali also pointed that out. So offer more floating holidays for those who don't celebrate events associated with Christian faiths. Simple. Number five, host more employee resource groups. And this is just gathering uh, feedback and input from, uh, uh, on diversity. From your, uh, from your employees. Number six, make the workplace conducive for diverse workers. So make accommodations for employees with disabilities, workers that speak foreign languages, that have unique living uh, circumstances, and so on and so on. In some cases, this is legally required. But when it's not, going above and beyond to accommodate employees will make them feel very much recognized. And then the last one is just, you know, celebrate diversity. So. It might be, you know, Black History Month to Women History to uh, Pride Month, like we have, um, you know, Aboriginal Month, uh, Hispanic Heritage Month to Juneteenth and other notable events. It might seem like a lot for a small business. You don't have to celebrate all of them. Find out from your employees, have a conversation and find out what is important to them. Let's not assume, uh, you know, that just because it's, it's February, Every employee wants to celebrate Black, Black History Month without having a conversation. Have that conversation, right? So, again, that's what it says here, actually. Do a quick poll among your employees to see how they like to celebrate. It can be as simple as a company-centered lunch or educational lunch and learn. Uh, but any celebration can bring positive attention and recognize diversity. So th those are seven tips. Um, uh, you know, to improve diversity and equi equity in small business. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to talk about is, you know, it's great to have diversity, but for, we, we all know that small businesses have, it's great to have diversity, but for small businesses, resources are limited. We all know that, right? So what, what, what are the benefits small businesses will ask? What are the benefits for, for, for doing this diversity thing? If there's no benefits, to, if there's no business benefit, uh, small businesses won't do it, right? So um, I'm going to talk about, uh, just for a few minutes, the benefits for small businesses for diversity. And these benefits will obviously improve your, your top line and your bottom line, your top line revenues and your bottom line profits, right? Ultimately. So... Number one, variety of different perspectives. So diversity in the workplace ensures a variety of different perspectives. And since it means that employers will have, sorry, employees will have different characteristics and backgrounds, they are also more likely to have a variety of different skills and experiences. Consequently, employees in a company with higher workplace diversity will have access to a variety of different perspectives, which is highly beneficial when it comes to planning and executing business strategy. When you get into any room, a variety of different perspectives to a business strategy is always beneficial, right? Increase uh, creativity. Um, when you put together people who see the same thing in different ways, you're more likely to get a melting pot of fresh new ideas 
thus improving the creativity of your workforce. And we all know where there's more creativity, uh, there's, 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 more, um, uh, there's more action, and there's more, there's more profits for a business. Higher innovation, diversity in the workplace leads to higher innovation rates. Again, uh, she already pointed that out. In a diverse workplace, employees are exposed to multiple perspectives and world views. When these various perspectives combine, they often come together in, no in novel ways, uh, opening doors for innovation. Where there's more innovation, more money, right, and more advancement. Faster problem solving. Companies with higher workplace diversity solve problems faster. And this is actually from the Harvard Business Review. Found diverse teams are able to solve problems faster than cognitively similar people. Because you're looking at the problem from, from the same angle, right? Employees from diverse backgrounds have different experiences and views, which is why they're able to bring diverse solutions to the table. That's the best solution can be chosen sooner, which leads to faster problem solving. Better decision making. Again here, yeah, workplace diversity leads to better decision making results. Um, researchers found that when diverse teams uh, made business decisions, they outperformed individual decision makers up to 87% of the time. Increased profits for small business. This is important. Companies with greater workplace diversity achieve greater profits. Um, it says here, companies with a diverse workforce make uh, better decisions faster, which gives them a serious advantage over their competitors. And so in this a uh, fast-moving, fast-paced world that we live in today, you need to make quick decisions. And it says here, according to research, uh, the more diverse uh, your workforce is, the quicker and the better the decisions they make. And when that happens, um, it gives the company a serious advantage over its competitors. As a result, companies with diversity in the workplace achieve better business results and reap more profit. And then there's obviously high em em employee engagement. I won't talk about that. Reduced employee turnover is just a point. I won't delve into that. And then better company reputation. That's an obvious one. Um, and then um, improved hiring results, obviously, um, is, a, is, a, um, is an advantage for, for diverse companies. And I won't delve into those. I just thought I would give you the, 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 uh, the brief points. The last thing I'm going to talk about uh, this afternoon um, before I, uh, before I leave the podium, is um, I just want to give examples of what other companies out there are doing. You know, the popular and everyday brands that we know, Coca-Cola, Marriott, EY, and Accenture, and Novaris, and MasterCard, and so on. The reason why these guys are doing that, or I, I have these diversity initiatives, means that there's money in it. Otherwise, they would not be doing it. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's as obvious as, as the, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. They are driven by profit, right? So why should we not do it if it, if it, if it, uh, if it drives profits? We should do it, right, as businesses. I'll start with uh, MasterCard. So we all know what MasterCard does. Most of us have one, you know, and a, a card from MasterCard in our pockets. 13,400 employees are, are across the world. What are they doing? They believe that diversity is what drives better insights, better decisions, and better products. They are trying to um, address generational barriers, right? <clears throat> it says a particularly unique project that MasterCard has executed over the past few years involves getting older employees in the company uh, more active when it comes to social media. Because they've noticed that there's an issue with older employees in social media. So to address generational barriers, uh, your pros, uh, th this, is, this is what they call the, uh, you know, a, a certain um, task group uh, within the, uh, the organization. And it's, it's made up of uh, young, professional, uh, young professionals within Mas uh, MasterCard. These guys offer a one-on-one -on -one social media reverse mentoring program to older employees who want to become familiar with social media platforms. So they have combined the older generation and the new generation and said, look, you guys have got something to teach these guys. Yes, as much as we know that the older guys in the, in, in, the, uh, in the organization can teach younger guys, but there's something that the older guys have a challenge with. Why don't you have you know, you know, an information exchange and help each other out? So that's very innovative, right? Coca-Cola. 
Um, so in, in 2017, a new parental benefits policy was implemented at Coca-Cola, whereby six weeks of paid leave is extended to all new mothers and fathers. The move was championed by Coca-Cola Millennial Voices, the group of young employees tasked with making sure there is a healthy level of employee retention in millennial uh, consumers and staff members. So you see, they are very, very intentional about recognizing that we have millennium employees. What do we need to do? Because that's a diverse group on its own. That's, that's what diversity is about. It's about recognizing all these, you know, uh, different formations or groups within your organization, right? They were recognized as a cohort. So what do we need to do in order to retain them? Let's give uh, both males and females in our organization the, uh, the six weeks parental leave um, so that they can spend time with their family, right? And, and as you know, this enhances um, employee retention and you know, in, more engagement in the company and things like that. Marriott, this is a very interesting one. At Marriott, remember I pointed out that at, at BDC we have a supply diversity program where we work with uh, businesses to supply us with uh, products and services. Marriott is doing something like that. For Marriott, women-owned business enterprises make up approximately 10% of Marriott's supply chain, and they vow to spend $1 billion with diverse-owned businesses uh, in the near future. And uh, for Marriott, LGBT uh, inclusion is also a top priority for these guys. But imagine. One billion dollars uh, for specifically for women uh, entrepreneurs to supply stuff to uh, to marriage. Novartis, within the organization, the word disability has been replaced with diversibility because they don't view people living with disabilities as having a lack of ability, but rather having diverse skills and proficiencies. And human resource professionals in the company are also educated on topics such as unconscious bias, inclusive leadership, disabilities, uh, and accommodations, and so on and so on. I know, you know, we all have stuff to do this afternoon. Um, and so uh, this is where I'll leave my presentation. If anyone has got any questions, um, I, I'm sure there is, um, you know, ways to ask the questions and for us to answer them. Um, just to reiterate, uh, this diversity thing, again, is not a destination, it's a journey, point number one. Point number two, it just starts with a conversation with the people in your organization if you're a small business. I think those two points are key. Um, and we are all at different stages. And I don't think you know, there's, a, there's a time when you can say uh, we have arrived because our society, our communities, will continue to evolve and they will continue to grow, they will continue to be more diverse in different ways. With that, I say thank you very much. Have yourself a great afternoon.